The profit improvement framework setup closely follows the process described in the structured case analysis tutorial. We start with defining the primary question, which in profit improvement cases is typically, how can we improve profit? To answer this question, we can form two alternative initial hypotheses focused on the two core drivers of profit, revenue and cost. One, we can improve profit by growing revenue, or two, we can improve profit by reducing costs. In order to prioritize between the two hypotheses, we must leverage the initial case data and ask clarifying questions. If the opening data do not point to either hypothesis, we recommend starting with the one focused on growing revenue. Next, we structure the hypothesis for testing in a logic tree, using the pyramid principle. The logic tree contains four key arguments that, individually and collectively, support the hypothesis. One, we can explain the profit decline in order to address its root cause. Two, we can grow revenue. Three, we can reduce costs if growing revenue proves difficult. And four, we can justify the plan financially. Finally, based on the logic tree elements, we define four key issues that can be answered simply as yes or no to form the core profit improvement framework. One, can we explain the profit decline? Two, can we grow revenue? Three, can we reduce costs? And four, can we justify the plan financially? Note that if our initial hypothesis is focused on reducing costs, or if the opening analysis of the profit decline indicates that it was caused by a cost increase, then we'll prioritize reducing costs ahead of growing revenue. We will analyze these key issues as distinct steps in a systematic yes or no hypothesis testing process to solve the case. Let's now explore each step in more detail. The first step in the framework is to test reasons for the profit decline. One key issue here is, can we explain the profit decline? To answer it, we'll analyze three main sub-issues. One, can we isolate the problem stream? Two, has revenue declined? And three, have costs increased? To isolate the problem stream, we'll ask three main questions. One, what is the size of the profit decline? We must quantify the overall decline both in absolute and percentage terms in order to establish the extent of the problem. Two, are there multiple profit streams? We must segment our total profit into distinct streams in order to explore deeper where the problem lies. And three, is the decline isolated to a specific stream? We must pinpoint the specific stream that caused the majority of the overall profit decline in order to prioritize it for further analysis. Next, we'll analyze which profit driver has caused the decline, revenue or cost, focusing on the problem profit stream identified earlier. In order to efficiently prioritize between revenue and cost analysis, we will ask a key qualifying question. How have revenue and costs changed in the problem stream? If revenue has declined, we'll ask three main questions, each focused on the three core drivers of revenue. One, has volume declined? Two, have prices declined? And three, has the revenue mix changed negatively? While identifying volume and price declines is quite straightforward, in order to examine a negative mix change, we must further segment our problem stream into substreams and isolate the one that has driven the negative mix change. Finally, if costs have increased, we'll ask two main questions. One, what are the main component costs? We must segment our total costs into distinct components in order to explore deeper where the problem lies. As per our cost segmentation tutorial, costs can be segmented in three main ways. Variable versus fixed, recurring versus one-time, and primary versus support. 
and two, is the increase isolated to a specific cost? We must pinpoint the specific cost that has caused the majority of the overall cost increase in order to prioritize it for corrective action. So to summarize, testing reasons for the profit decline requires two drill-down analysis steps. One, isolating the problem stream. And two, determining how revenue and costs have changed in the problem stream, including identifying the underlying drivers. Based on this analysis, we will refine our initial hypothesis before moving to the next step. Specifically, we'll prioritize whether to focus on revenue or costs in order to improve profit. The second step in the framework is to test our ability to meet customer needs. The key issue here is, can we meet customer needs? To answer it, we'll analyze two main sub-issues. One, do we have a unique marketing mix? And two, do we have strong internal capabilities? To analyze the marketing mix, we'll ask four main questions focused on each mix element. One, can we launch unique products? We must be sure that our products will offer customers unique functional utility, ideally supported by a strong brand image and valuable services. Two, can we offer compelling prices? We must be certain that our prices will match customers' willingness to pay and offer strong relative value versus alternatives. Three, can we gain full channel support? We must be able to secure maximum distribution in terms of both quantity and quality in customer preferred channels. And four, can we deploy strong marketing and sales resources? We must be able to put in place robust customer pull and channel push promotion activities in order to generate customer demand. To gain a detailed understanding of marketing mix analysis, we recommend that you view our marketing mix tutorial. Next, to analyze the internal capabilities, we will ask three main questions. One, do we have efficient operations? We must have a value chain that is both cost-effective and capable of fully meeting projected customer demand. Two, do we have a skilled and motivated team? We must have an organization with the right skills and incentives to execute our entry successfully. And three, do we have sufficient financing? We must have the capital required for substantial market entry investment. So to summarize, testing our ability to meet customer needs requires analyzing two main factors. One, marketing mix, and two, internal capabilities. Based on this analysis, we will further refine our hypothesis before moving to the next step. The third step in the framework is to test the firm's ability to compete. The key issue here is, can the firm compete effectively? To answer it, we'll analyze three main sub-issues. One, is the competition structure favorable? Two, do competitors have unique advantages? And three, do other industry forces pose threats? To analyze the competition structure, we'll ask two main questions. One, are there dominant competitors? We must identify powerful and well-resourced players in order to avoid a direct confrontation with them after the acquisition. Moreover, we must be prepared to abandon the acquisition if it involves a high risk of intense competition. And two, if there are dominant players, do they focus on specific segments? We must keep away from segments dominated by powerful players and instead identify market areas where competition is weak and fragmented. Next, to analyze competitors' advantages, we'll ask two main questions similar to those asked earlier, to identify our target firm's strengths. One, do they have a unique marketing mix? 
We must evaluate competitors' products, prices, channel support, and marketing and sales resources relative to our target firm's mix. And two, do they have strong internal capabilities? We must assess competitors' operations, organization, and financing, again, relative to our target firm's capabilities. Finally, to analyze threats from other industry forces, we'll ask three main questions. 1. Do new entrants and substitutes pose threats? We must identify other players that have similar M&A targets and entry plans, as well as substitutes that serve customer needs better or at lower prices. 2. Do suppliers have significant power? We must be cautious about acquisition targets with concentrated suppliers that have the power to drive input costs higher and quality lower. And three, do macro factors present challenges? We must evaluate four such factors, economic growth, technology trends, industry regulation, and product complements. So to summarize, Testing the firm's ability to compete requires analyzing three main factors. 1. Competition structure. 2. Competitors' advantages. And 3. Threats from other industry forces. Based on this analysis, we will further refine our hypothesis before moving to the final step. The fourth and final step in the framework is to test the financial justification for capacity expansion. The key issue here is, can we justify new capacity financially? To answer it, we will analyze two main sub-issues. One, do we have a specific financial objective? And two, can we achieve the financial objective? we would oftentimes identify the specific financial objective at the start of the case. If not, or if we need to clarify it further, we'll ask three main questions. One, what is the specific objective? We must be clear about what we have to achieve, by when, and under what conditions. Two, what is the financial metric? We must identify the specific metric for the objective because different firms often use different measures. For example, the return on new capacity can be defined in terms of net cash flow, incremental profit, and even share growth. So it's important to get it right. And three, how is the metric computed? We must have a clear understanding of how the metric is calculated in order to set up our math logic correctly. Next, to analyze our ability to achieve the financial objective, we'll ask three main questions. One, what is the direct financial result? We must quantify the financial benefit that results directly from capacity expansion and compare it versus the case objective. Two, what are the additional synergies? As often required, we must account for positive and negative synergies which result indirectly from capacity expansion and the overall financial result. And three, what are the key risks? We must anticipate and ideally quantify the key risks that can jeopardize capacity expansion. So to summarize, testing the financial justification for capacity expansion requires two analysis steps. One, defining a specific financial objective and two, determining if we can achieve the objective. After completing this step, we will be able to make our final case recommendation.